videos we're going to take a look at creating this organic creature using curves now I've created this AI image to help guide the curves with this template shape with it being AI it has some anomalies in the actual design itself for example here this left leg is different than the right leg that we can see so what I'm going to do is ignore this back leg here as well as this back arm and I'm also just going to focus on these front foreground limbs in order to work. Now, this will make the model look strange when we model it. However, we can achieve a pose like this, for example, if we rig this in a different program. Now, there are many different ways in which we can create this object. We don't need to use curves. However, as this is a curves topic, I'm going to use them to initially start the process off and then I'll change and use some of the other techniques that we've discussed in earlier videos. So let's get started. So to start with, you can see that I brought my reference image in here. The way that I did that was to go to this small icon here, and then I've pulled the tab away from the menu, and I've chosen this option here where it says reference image for Z axis, as we are looking in the Z axis, as you can see here. So once I do that, it gives me my dialog box and I can then select the image, which is this one in this case, and then it will bring it and place it into my workspace in the correct axis. So here, for example, with this dialog box, we can change things like the opacity of the image as well as rotating, etc., and the controls in here really speak for themselves. In addition to that, we've got these handles on the external area of the image that we can use to manipulate the image as well. Now in previous videos, we've looked at different ways that we can use the Q menu to create our curves. And I've got some already made here, which uses the same principle where we just select our Q menu and select the type of curve we want and we begin by plotting our points. However, this isn't the only way that we can create curves. If we've already got curves made in a different application, we can bring those in as EPS files and use them in our curves tree. Let's take a look at how we do that. So here I am inside of Affinity Designer and you could be using a program like Illustrator any vector program that can export EPS files will do. You can see I brought my image in on this layer and I began to draw with the vector tools inside of Affinity Designer to create these curves. Now I've created these curves, as we can see here, as one large piece and I've just traced around the edge of my image, as we can see, and I've broken that up into different sections. I'm not doing any detailed work, as you can see here on the foot, but I'm just using Affinity Designer to rough out the shapes that I want. So once I've got that done, I'm just going to then go to File, Export, and I'm going to Export as an EPS, and 3D Code will be able to read and import the EPS file. So with those curves saved as an EPS from Affinity Designer, all I'm going to do now is go over to the Curves tree and go to this icon here where it says Load Curve. Once I click on that, then I'll get the dialog box to open the EPS file. So I'll click on that and you can see here that it's looking for a spline EPS. So I'll say Open and you can see that it's brought it in. So if this happens where the curves are offset from the image placement, all we need to do is select our curves and use our move tool in the Q menu and reposition. Now from Affinity Designer, you can see that it's given me an extra curve here of the bounding box of the image, which comes in handy for placement if I need to zoom in, for example, here, and just make sure that I get those corners in the right place based on my image. So with those all lined up now, I can exit that move tool and deselect my curves and I'm ready to go. Now that we have these curves inside of 3D Coat, 
I can go into here now and I can eliminate the ones that I don't need. So for example, this one that showed the border of the image, I can delete that one. And you can see that from the EPS file, it's maintained the layers that I created inside of Affinity Designer. Now, as they stand, these curves are not going to work because they are closed curves, meaning that there are no open edges to this curve. So I have to correct that. So what I'm going to do now is just move forwards and name these curves appropriately. Also, we'll look at how we can change the properties of these curves to make them work with the tools that we need them to work with. So here, for example, I'm going to look at this foot here and this leg. And if I use the eraser here on this curve, let me find which one it is. It's always a good idea to name your curves. Uh, because this is now a closed curve, I need to make it open and just start to delete part of this foot here. And I'll have to do the same thing roughly at the top as well. So now it gives me two curves for the back leg. You can see them here called curve and erased chunk. So this is the erased chunk and this is the original curve of the back leg. This is why naming these is going to be a lot easier when it comes to selecting them for creating meshes. So here you can see in the curves tree that I've gone ahead and I've split all of these out. We can see here the back leg where we split at the bottom of the leg and at the top of the leg as well to split those curves into two. And I've just renamed them leg back and leg front. The body has been split into a top half of the body and a bottom half of the body. And I've ended the body at the jawline here with the front leg. You can see that I've just focused on this small limb at the front and just try to trace that shape around and I've left the actual hands and claws etc as I have with the toes uh, on the on the bottom of the foot. In addition to this I've also got a profile curve so if we were looking at this dinosaur from the front essentially it is a cylinder so that's why I have this profile curve created and then I've got the mouth bottom and the mouth top split as well. So these are all going to act as my guide curves for the next process to start building the mesh. So to begin with, I'm going to be using this top curve, this bottom curve and this profile curve that we can see here. The curves tool that I'm going to select for this is going to be the swept N curve here. So just before we start that, let's just zoom in just to clarify our curves are separated here. So I've taken the small portion here and erased that portion to make these curves completely separate. Although at a distance that you may think that they are actually connected. And obviously at the jaw, we've got this separation here as well. So that's my initial setup. And I've also, if we just turn around with the axis showing, you can see that my curves are all on the X axis here. So with the background reference still active, I'm going to choose my swept N curve here. So I'll start by using this little picker and pick the top curve, pick the bottom curve, and then first profile will be used with this and you can see immediately it starts to generate a preview mesh for me. So here we can see we've got a pretty good representation of the core of our model. We do need some more spans in here. So what I'm going to do here is go over to my V spans and increase the number here, something that gives us a little bit more shape. So I'll increase it to 30. So that conforms more to that shape. Now, as you can see at the front, the mouth isn't open. It's closed as it's wrapped those polygons around this profile shape and curves to create this geometry. It's also created a cap on the front here. We can easily remove that with the options here to leave that open-ended there. 
And what we'll have to do is we'll have to come into our mesh once it's created and define this mouth shape and another pass. For now, we've got everything we need. However, you may notice that the polygons here are not lining nicely. So we need to change this. They're all basically vertical. And what I'd like is for these vertical ones to change their direction as we move towards the head. The body is fine and the tail is looking good too. We just need to correct this area here. So to correct this neck area, what I have to do is change the tool here over to a standard brush. And with this add loop direction line, I can now click roughly where this purple line is here to change that direction. Now, although it's improved the neck, now I've got this issue here where the body is starting to move in the wrong direction. Now, if I zoom in, you'll notice here that there's a very small dot and I can change that position by left clicking and dragging in order to show where I want the direction of these polygons. So that's looking better but we still have to work on this body now as it's changed. So I'll add another direction line in here. And this is the, the red line that we can see on the screen is the directional line that I can change. And here you can see a little more clearly that small purple dot that it allows me to position that. So that aligns my polygons a little better. Now, another thing we can see on here is maybe I want to increase some resolution here in the head. So what I can do here is simply double click on that purple line again to give me an extra split. Maybe I want it to go here, for example. And here on the end of the nose here. So I'll double click to split. And you can go in and create as many of these as you feel necessary but at any time in this process we can always add these using other tools in our tool set so here i've added a little bit more geometry in the head just to match those shapes a little closer so i'm going to say okay to that and i'm going to apply the mesh and there we can see it's created that geometry for me and a large portion of that body mass has been created just through using those curves. In the next video, we'll continue to build the legs and arms of our dinosaur using curves. See you next time.